Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to continue our discussion of Chapter Seven permeability. In the previous lecture, we talked about two lab methods that you can use to determine hydraulic conductivity of soil.、Uh, that is the constant head test and the falling head test. Today, we are going to look at some other methods, including some empirical relationships that correlate the、uh, hydraulic conductivity. With grain size and void ratio of soil, and also we'll briefly discuss this、uh, pumping well test in the field. And finally,、uh, we're going to look at how to determine equivalent hydraulic conductivity in stratified soil. So let's start with this empirical relationships. So first, let's look at empirical relationships for granular soil. And there are many different. Relationships exist for granular soil、uh, from different studies in the past, and the most commonly used one, perhaps the simplest one, is this Hazen's equation. So that's equation seven point twenty three in your textbook. So Hazen's equation, first of all, this is based on Hazen's observation of flow in fairly uniform sand. In this, in this Hazen's equation. Hydraulic conductivity K is estimated to be a constant C times d10, which is the particle size corresponding to 10 percent finer or 10 percent passing、uh, particle size distribution curve. And this d10 is also called effective size. So when you use Hazen's equation, keep in mind the unit. So this d10 in Hazen's equation. Is in millimeter, and then C is a constant between 1.0 and 1.5, and the result of this K here is the unit is in centimeter per second. So keep that in mind. If you're using this constant and if plugging D10 in millimeter, the、um, this fitted constant、uh, hydraulic conductivity K is in centimeter per second. So that's Hazen's equation. And if you have even a small amount of clays or silts in your soil, this may significantly impact the hydraulic conductivity. And there are also other empirical relationship relationships. So I listed some examples here. Equation twenty four, thirty, thirty two, and thirty four in your textbook are some other examples of、um, empirical relationships for cohesive soil. The Perhaps a commonly used one, one of the most commonly used one is the Taylor's equation. So that's、uh, 30, equation 7.32 in your textbook. And in Taylor's equation, so the hydraulic conductivity is related to the void ratio of soil. So this can be written as log of k. So k is、uh, hydraulic conductivity equals to log of k naught. Minus e naught minus e over c k. Okay. In this equation, this k naught is the in situ hydraulic conductivity at a void ratio of e naught,、okay. and k is hydraulic conductivity at void ratio of e, and c k is a constant, so it's a hydraulic conductivity change index. So that's this C, and this may be taken to be about 0.5 e naught. So C k varies with e naught, and I'll show、uh, basically how the C k is fitted. But before that, this equation, Taylor's equation, is good for e naught less than about 2.5. So this is the range of e naught that this Taylor equation works best. And for that C k constant, so that change index. And this figure here shows the change of e naught, the initial in situ void ratio with c k, and you can see the best fit line here, a linear fit, c k is point of、uh, times e naught. So that is empirical relation for cohesive soil. And the next method, as I mentioned, this is a field test, and in the field. Uh, if you want to determine the average hydraulic conductivity of a soil deposit in the flow direction, 
uh, one of the methods you can use is this pumping well test. So you have this permeable soil layer. So that's permeable soil layer. And you want to determine the hydraulic conductivity of that soil layer. And then you have uh, this is test well in the center. So this is test well. And you have a couple observation wells. And this permeable soil layer is underlain by an impermeable layer. Okay. So in the pumping well test, first water is pumped from the test well at a constant rate. Okay. So you're pumping water out of the test well. And then because the water level is basically dropping in the test well when you pump it, so the flow direction is basically into the testing well. So that's the direction of the flow. And then you have a few observation wells. So these are observation wells at certain distance from the test well. And you observe the water level in these observation wells. So when the water level in the test and observation wells reaches steady state, so observation wells, then you can calculate the hydraulic conductivity from heights and distance. Now, of course, also you need the flow rate as well. Okay. So to calculate the hydraulic conductivity, so in the pumping well test, the flow rate Q is governed by, again, Darcy's law, K I A. Okay. And this K is the hydraulic conductivity you're looking for. So you want to calculate this K. And Q is flow rate you can measure from the pumping well. And then I and A. So I is hydraulic gradient. So this I here. And this is head loss per distance. Okay. So for this pumping well, because water is flowing from this observation well into this testing well, so first the head loss, if I use dH for head loss, and the corresponding distance, I'm going to use dR. Okay. So that's a radial direction. So water is flowing basically along this radial direction into the uh, test well. So you have dH, dR. And the distance or the cross-sectional area A for this pumping well test is 2 pi R. So that's basically uh, the, uh, so if you look at any point at the distance r from the pump well, uh, this test well. So a is 2 pi r times h. So, so this is h. And then if you substitute i and a into this q expression, so we have q equals to k dh dr. So that's head loss per distance, and this distance is along the radial direction. And cross-sectional area A is 2 pi r times h. Okay. So this is showing just a 2D uh, cross-section, and in reality, this is a 3D well. So you have a cylinder, circular cylinder shape. That's why this A is 2 pi r times h. Okay. And then if you shift moving things around, so you can integrate this from r1 or R2 to R1, and moving terms associated with R to one side, and then terms associated with H to the other side. So 2 pi K over Q times from H2 to H1, H dH. Okay. So I'm simply moving terms associated with distance R to one side and H to the other. So after you work out this integration and solve for K, so the hydraulic conductivity for pumping well test 2.303 times Q log of 10 R1 over R2 divided by pi H1 square minus H2 square. Okay. So this is the hydraulic conductivity for pumping well tests. And that constant 2.303, 
So we talked about this constant last time. It's because we are changing the log natural log to log 10. So that's why you have this 2.303 constant here. So that is the field pumping well test. And finally, as I mentioned in this lecture, so I want to briefly talk about this equivalent, equivalent hydraulic conductivity in stratified soil. So first, stratified soil is very common in nature. So because of the deposition process, so most of the time in the field, you will find this layered structure. So this strati basically stratified soil. And the hydraulic conductivity can be different from layer to layer. So you have different hydraulic conductivity. And if you want to estimate the flow rate of, say, um, of this layered soil in certain direction, you can calculate an equivalent K. So you can calculate an equivalent hydraulic conductivity. And the K depends on the direction of the flow. And the, deri the derivation of equivalent K makes use of Darcy's law. So basically, you use Darcy's law, you can derive equivalent K for um, horizontal and vertical flows. So we're going to look at uh, these two cases, uh, the horizontal and vertical flow uh, separately. So the first case is uh, horizontal flow. So the direction of the flow as shown on this slide, is in the horizontal direction. But I also put a note here, this is called a parallel flow. Okay. So what's more important here is actually the direction of the flow is parallel to soil layer. So you have all these soil layers. So the layer is in the horizontal direction, and the flow is parallel to these layer interfaces. Okay. So that's called a, a parallel flow. And to derive hydraulic conductivity for this horizontal or parallel flow case, we make use of this total flow, we call this Q, is the sum of the flow through each layer. So let's call this, each flow we call Q of J, and J is from 1 to N. So assuming we have N layers here. And for each layer, this QJ is the hydraulic conductivity of that layer, we call this K1, times the hydraulic gradient of that layer times the cross-sectional area. And then for the total flow Q, we equal to K H E Q times I, that's the total hydraulic gradient, times the total cross-sectional area. Okay. So if you use this, and for this flow, A is basically H, so that's the cross-sectional area of the J layer, and this total height, or total cross-sectional area A, is sum of all the uh, cross-sectional area of uh, each layer. So if you substitute this and solve for K, so you get an expression, so this is kj, and this is horizontal flow, so we're using khj. So if you substitute this into uh, this total flow equals to sum of uh, flow of each layer, we get this following expression. So this is the equivalent hydraulic conductivity of horizontal or parallel flow. Okay. So kh, we call that khEq. So this is the first case, horizontal or parallel flow. The second case, this is called vertical, or perhaps more accurately, series flow. So in this flow, it's in the, as shown on this slide, this is in the vertical direction. But more importantly, it's flowing through the soil layer one after the other. So it's a series flow. And to derive the hydraulic or equivalent hydraulic conductivity for this case, we make use of the fact that the total head loss will be the sum of the loss through each layer. Okay. So you use that expression. So H is equal to sum of all H, so J from one to number of layers, let's say N layers. Okay. 
And from this, you can derive an equivalent hydraulic conductivity. And the final form for that series or vertical flow we call KVEQ is given on this slide here. So that's equivalent hydraulic conductivity for stratified soil. In this figure here, this table here, table 3.7.3, uh, this shows the ratio of KH over KV. Okay. For natural soil, um, typically the permeability or hydraulic conductivity is anisotropic, meaning its value depending on the flow direction. And for natural soil, because of the way the soil is deposited, the horizontal hydraulic conductivity is typically higher than the vertical one. So the ratio of KH over KV is typically greater than 1. So if you look at different types of soil, you notice this ratio is greater than 1. And for some soils, this ratio can be as high as 40. So meaning you have a much higher hydraulic conductivity in the horizontal direction. So it's easier for water, for, for water to flow horizontally in soil than it flow vertically. Okay. So that is the uh, basic hydraulic conductivity for stratified soil.